So what do you do when you're waiting for feedback on a screenplay? Whether you're an indie filmmaker or a studio filmmaker, or if you're just writing a script for a commercial or uh, some other type of video production? Well, I'm going through that right now. And um, I guess one thing you could do is start a blog like I'm doing right now. Um, basically, I am um, just not feeling like I want to rest on my laurels. Um, I want to feel like I'm doing something to further my project along um, while I'm waiting for feedback on my screenplay. But uh, just to not get too far ahead of myself, my name is Billy and I'm starting to do this because a while back I had a uh, blog on LinkedIn uh, called Behind the Scenes with Billy where I talked about um, any type of behind the scenes details that I might have that I might like to share about any projects I worked on whether they were video productions or film productions or just anything I thought people might be interested to hear about and there were also some fun stories I did on there from the time I worked at the Wall Street Journal as a video producer um, and I think the reason why I'm doing this is because whenever I'm working on a project sometimes it helps me to hear what other people in the industry or any of my colleagues might be going through as they approach their projects and so maybe my experiences could help some of you. What's going on right now is that I just finished the latest draft of my uh, feature length screenplay and I'm calling it the first 22 or 2022 draft. Um, I'm calling it a first draft, but in reality, it's actually not a first draft. It's more like a 30th draft because it's something I started writing uh, about 15 years ago. Um, in 2007, I was driving through the Central Valley on a road trip from Los Angeles to San Francisco. I was living in Los Angeles at the time, and um, an idea came to me. And maybe I'll talk a little bit more about what that idea was, but I don't want to get too far off topic. And it was something that really intrigued me. I told a friend of mine who was another um, fellow uh, graduate of the USC Film School, which is where I went to school. There's my degree right there. Um, and um, he thought it sounded pretty exciting. He was, work he was uh, just finishing um, work on an independent feature comedy that he was working on. And... Um, we decided to start collaborating on it together and it went through draft after draft after draft we did a table read we did a pitch packet um, we tried to line up investors we um, we even actually sat down with someone I knew who had started working in development at Warner Brothers to try to pitch it to her um, that was a whole other story and it just never materialized Long story short, I started working on short films. Um, I moved on from the job that I had in Los Angeles, and I moved up here to the Bay Area and started a family with my wife. We own a house now. Now we have three kids. And I started doing short films and um, got those into festivals. I started video producing for the Wall Street Journal, and now I have a full-time job in corporate video. And I've just evolved as a storyteller since I did those original drafts of the screen of the screenplay and now it's 2022 um, it has been 15 years since I started writing this project or start first came up with the idea and I'm just like enough waiting um, I've worked on a feature film but it wasn't really mine I was the editor I was assistant director I was a script supervisor but I'm just like it's been 15 years since I came up with that idea. I'm not getting any younger. Um, I'm 41 years old and I need to stop waiting. I need to stop waiting for the right screenwriter to come and make my script better. I need to stop waiting for an investor to give me all the money I need to do it the way I want it to do. And I just said, enough waiting. Um, I came to this realization a couple months ago and um, I said, you know, I'm going to set a deadline for myself. I'm going to plan to produce this or direct it in winter of 2023 to 2024. Um, you know, maybe I'll try to set some shoot dates for early winter 2023, but if it spills into winter 2024, that's fine. And, um, you know, and if it comes to the point, you know, heaven forbid, I can't get anybody to help me with it. I can't get any money to hire people to work on it. I 
am just going to grab my DSLR and get a couple actors, you know, maybe some theater students from a local college and just make it myself. Because again, I'm 41 years old. I've been working on this thing for 15 years. Enough waiting. I am going to make this thing happen. That's the goal. So what I did was I took my screenplay and I read it. And um, pretty soon into it, I'm reading it. I'm like, you know what? I don't like this anymore. And I think that's not to necessarily say that my original material was bad. But just like I said, I've evolved as a storyteller. I've evolved as a person. And so what I find compelling or believable as a story has changed. And um, hopefully that means that I have a better understanding of what people will want to see. But I'm not going to get too wrapped up in that. I'm just going to keep, keep going. And so I decided to just rewrite the whole thing from the ground up. And I was actually really proud that I did that because I remember way back in the day I read one of those um, articles where um, uh, storytellers from Pixar kind of gave their list of tips of how to best approach writing for the screen. And one of the steps in there, which always terrified me, and I tried to avoid it like the plague as much as I could, was, all right, now that you've done all this work, rewrite it. And I'm just like, gosh, I don't want to do that. But now that it's been some time and I read it and I don't like what I have on there, I'm just like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And so I did. And so that's why I call the draft that I have right now Draft 1, the 2022 edition, because it's rewritten from the ground up. Um, the basic premise is still the same. and um, But I think what was nice about that process was that as I was rewriting, anything that stuck out in my head that I remember from the earlier drafts, and I did my best to not even look at the original drafts from years ago um, because I didn't want to go down the rabbit hole of just rehashing stuff that didn't work. If there was something that stuck out in my head, something I remembered from those earlier drafts, and I was still putting it into these current drafts, that told me that, you know, I still like it. It's still resonating with me, and hopefully that means it'll still resonate with other people. So that was my process. Um, and then at one point, and this is not an entirely new idea, um, I started skimming through the draft I was reading and I was starting to feel like, you know what, this is still already feeling boring to me. So what I did was, um, I started listening to a screenwriting podcast that, um, a couple of writers from Pixar started um can't think of their names right now but i can i can look it up but it's a great podcast and i'll try to find the link and uh share it with anybody who's interested um and they talked about that it's a good idea that when you're writing a screenplay to really get your face into what they call the lava and that means really going into places that you might be scared to go to you know things that things that scare you things that anger you, things that um, make you sad. Um, don't be afraid to go there because if you can get to the point where you're writing something that's going to make you feel sick to your own stomach, chances are your audience will resonate on that level as well and it'll make your storytelling even more compelling. So I threw a couple of those things in there. And when I say throw them in there, I guess I'm using that a little lightly using that term a little lightly because I didn't just throw them in there. I wrote them in there with passion. I actually even wrote a personal statement about why I put those things in there. So, and then I'm still thinking this story is still boring to me. And what I did to fix that, I changed the three protagonists who are just three dudes. I changed them to three women. And then when I started rereading it, I was like, yes, this is working. Why does it work better because they're women now? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm overcompensating for the fact that I am self-aware enough to realize that, you know, I'm a white, middle-class, Christian, straight male, and other points of view need to be considered when it comes to filmmaking. Um, 
I do like to champion the cause of getting more women behind the camera or having more stories told by women, for women, about women. And um, I don't know. But for me, for whatever reason, it made the script so much better to change the protagonists from guys to girls. And once I did that, not really much changed in terms of the actual writing. The characters still do the exact same things. Maybe they say a couple words that are a little differently. Maybe that's my gender bias coming into play where it's like, okay, well now that they're men, I don't think I don't think I'd ever hear a woman say these lines. But still not many not much dialogue changed. Um and so when I finally felt that the screenplay was ready for me to show other people and get some feedback, I um, sent it to a few people I knew would be interested in reading it, um, but I realized that I had sent it to like three guys and one woman, and I'm just like, this isn't enough in terms of me making sure I get the female perspective on such a project. Um, there have been times in the past where I've written screenplays um, and incorrectly wrote dialogue for female characters that just did not fly. Um, so and I think it's really important for us guys whenever we're writing and developing female characters to really be sure you get a woman's perspective on it because you might start writing stuff that just isn't going to fly. I remember one time I was doing one of my short films. It was called GPS and you can actually find it on YouTube. Um, there's a scene where two women go into the bathroom and I wrote some lines about what I thought women might talk about when they go into the bathroom with each other. And uh, my lead actress and my wife read it and they're like, really you really think this is what we talk about in here no 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 like okay point taken i don't know what you talk about in there so lesson learned anytime i write anything that involves women i really be sure i get their perspective on it because i don't want to i don't want to fall in the trap of what i once heard reese witherspoon talk about where she said publicly she's so sick of reading uh, film scripts where you have some hopeless female character and they go, oh God, what do we do now? And I'm like, yeah, I could see where that's pretty obnoxious. So I don't want to fall into that trap myself. So what I did was um, I reached out a couple of other um, women that I know that, that are colleagues or work in the business and they have respectfully declined um, reading the script and they didn't give reasons, but I respected those decisions. And I think it's probably just because they have way too much on their plate, and which I can understand. You know, one of them is a parent. I'm a parent myself. I don't have a lot of extra time, so I totally understand that. Another one just got too much on her plate because she, um, you know, is a producer and writer on a very, very popular TV show. Uh, you might have heard of it. It's called Bridgerton. So, you know, I respect that. Um, but I still, I, like, this isn't enough. I need to get more feedback on this. And I then thought about, okay, well, who would probably have enough time, who might be willing? So I went to the Bay Area Women Filmmakers Group that um, I subscribed to, and I just sent an email out to them um, a couple days ago saying, hey, I've got this script, um, and I'll actually reveal to you what it's about. It's a um, apocalyptic thriller. Three women are crossing the Central Valley, specifically the Sacramento, uh, Sacramento Delta, because a uh, nuclear bomb has allegedly gone off in San Francisco. And I got quite a few responses saying, oh, that sounds really cool. I'd love to read it. Um, and so I'm like, all right, great. I'll send you the screenplay. Um, I did my due diligence to protect myself just in case anyone, you know, winds up stealing my ideas, which... I realize is a presumptuous thing. It kind of makes you feel like you assume your idea is that great that someone would want to steal it. But just in case, you never know. I still registered it with the WGA. Um, I'm keeping a log of all the people I share it with. That's what I normally do. And um, now I'm just waiting to hear back from people what they think. And 
it's funny is that this waiting process, if you're a filmmaker or a screenwriter or someone who's gone through this process before, you probably know what this is like, where you're just waiting for feedback. And there's a mixture of emotions that can go in with just waiting. Um, first of all, one emotion I feel like is that I don't want to wait. I don't want to rest on my laurels. What can I do to feel like I'm furthering my production along while I'm waiting for feedback? So I was like, okay, well, do I start doing visual effects that I know are going to be in there? Because um, that's actually part of my plan. I actually do have experience doing visual effects, so I'm going to probably do all the visual effects myself so I don't have to pay somebody else to do it. But then I stopped myself. I'm like, well, no, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because what if those scenes that I'm working on wind up getting cut out of the film because it didn't work in the script? So I should probably wait to get more feedback on the script before I go down that rabbit hole. Well, what else can I do while I wait? Um, do I start finding locations? Again, doesn't make sense to go down that rabbit hole just yet because, one, I want to film this in the winter. I want to be sure I know what the locations are going to look like in winter, so I should probably scout them when it gets to be this winter um, if I intend to shoot next winter. Um, so I don't want to go down that rabbit hole yet. Third of all, um, what else could I do while I wait? Should I just start a vlog and get my thoughts out? And even if nobody watches it, at least I'm doing the due diligence of starting a filmmaker's journal, which might be compelling to listen to or watch uh, later on. And that's actually an inspiration I got from a fellow filmmaker that I worked on before. His name is Chris DePretis. One of the cool things he did when um, he premiered the feature film we all worked on together a couple of years ago is called Death Blood 4. Um, he handed out programs and there was a journal that he had written in there to talk about all the challenges and thoughts that he had as the production went on. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I don't really feel like I want to write a journal, so I'm just going to record myself talking about it. That's how I'm going to do it. And, you know, I'm trying to build an audience on my YouTube channel, so I might as well kill two birds one stone with one stone. So back to this whole anticipation of waiting for feedback on a screenplay and how you deal with that. I just am going to be honest about where my feelings and my thoughts are going to go. One might think that, you know, in terms of fears or anxiety about it, one might think that, you know, the fear is, oh, well, what if people don't like it? Um, you know, what if they rip it to shreds? What if they say this is terrible, there's no way it could possibly ever be good, I would never watch this? That actually isn't the fear. I actually am hoping someone says something like that because at least then it would give me the information about, you know, what should be approved, improved upon, what's going to work, what isn't going to work. Um, or maybe I could go through the process of saying, okay, well, is this a moment where I should listen to people or should I trust my gut and move forward with it anyway? Because heaven knows people have had to do that many 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 times throughout history not just with filmmaking but with entrepreneurship with um, many other things my biggest fear is that no one will ever respond no one will give me no one will give me feedback it'll just be like go right over their heads or they just won't even take the time to read it i think that's always the biggest fear in fact i've even said that i think i put it on my linkedin profile my biggest fear in life is making people feel bored. I think that can be corroborated too by some friends of mine who are stand-up comics. You know, they stand-up comics, I have a lot of admiration for them because they really put themselves out there. They get up in front of a stage or they get up on a stage in front of a crowd of people and tell a bunch of jokes and you just never know what kind of response people are going to give. And I understand that when you're a stand-up comic, the fear there is not having people boo you off stage or have people heckle you or have people um, tell you you're terrible. The biggest fear is just you go up there and say a bunch of stuff and there's just no reaction at all. And I don't consider myself a stand-up comic at all, but I can relate to that. Um, when you pour your heart and soul into something and it just doesn't engage people at all, that that's what doesn't feel good. And so if any of you 
out there are working on your own projects and you have that same fear, I can tell you're not alone. I've done projects before where people have ripped them to shreds. And maybe when I was younger, I took that to heart and was a little bit more sensitive about it. But really, I am, I am actually glad all those things happened because at least it taught me that it's important for people to get a reaction out of your work, even if they hate it. Because what really doesn't feel good is when just nobody watches it. It doesn't resonate with them at all. I would rather people hate my stuff and give me a billion reasons why it sucks than to just say, yeah, cool, great, good job. And then have that be it. I want to feel like my work has engaged them on some level. Obviously, I'd like it to make them feel good. I'd like them to like it. That's the best case scenario. But again, I would rather them be enraged by it or disgusted by it than have no reaction at all. So that's the biggest challenge, I think, with waiting for feedback is, are they even going to respond? And... I've made peace with the fact that it's possible that they may never. We'll see. It's only been a few days since I sent the screenplay to the people in that Bay Area Women's Film Group. It's been about a week since I've sent it to other people. But we're just going to have to see. And in the meantime, I'm not going to rest on my laurels. Like I said, come winter 2023 or 2024... If I can't get anybody involved in this production, except for a couple actors, and I have to shoot it myself with my DSLR, so be it. I will do what I can to get this film made, because I have waited long enough. So thanks everyone for watching. Um, you know how to reach me if you have any comments or questions. Good luck with all of your projects. And I wish you the best.